Welcome back to Unwrapped, where we're getting interactive with our eats. And one treat that made us laugh was Wacky Packs, the sticker cards from the 70s that poked fun at the foods that we ate. So let's discover what they're doing to make a comeback and find out how they get away with these crazy antics. There's a new craving for frosted snakes, sneakers, and lice cakes. And what sounds gross to grown-ups, kids are eating up. There's nothing more than a kid likes to do than to make fun of things that their parents enjoy. These are part of a new line of wacky packages or wacky packs. Tradable stickers with the sole purpose of poking fun at popular household products. Uh, we don't expect people to take this product very seriously. It's, it is irreverent and intentionally so. It was 1967 when the Topps Company in New York City first introduced Wacky Packs. But 1973 was their heyday, when publications like Mad Magazine poked fun at American culture. During that time, I think it's safe to say that uh, Wacky Packages became a nationwide disease, spreading to all parts of the nation. And kids like Greg Grant from Philadelphia caught the Wacky Wave. Every kid knew about them, and they were crazy, and you couldn't get them anywhere because they were always sold out. Today, this mathematician is counted as one of the largest collectors of wacky packs in the world. And in his collection are some of the first. You had to punch them out and then lick them like a stamp and stick them on things. And apparently that just didn't work too well. Greg has over 15,000 of these individual stickers that range in value from 10 cents to $1,000. He also has scores of boxes, uncut sheets, and one unusually chewy collection. I've got gum. I'm probably the only guy with a gum collection. Most of these pieces are whole, but a rare piece from the 70s needed some work. I had to piece one together that was in about 20 pieces. I sat there with like tweezers and crazy glue. My wife was like, he's gone. But Greg's most prized wackies are even sweeter. They're original paintings that the stickers were eventually made from. They're not, you know, done real big and reduced. They're painted real small, just a few times bigger than the sticker. And his most valuable painting, worth over $20,000, is the iconic Gadzooka. I would sell my mother before I would sell these. And because Greg loves the nostalgia, he keeps on buying. This one was 16000 on eBay. It's that same internet influence that's making Tops go wacky once again, reviving a brand that stopped in 1991. We realized that there was a, a, a rebirth of interest, and at that point decided that maybe it was time to bring, bring wacky packages back again. In the new series, there's 55 different stickers, but inside each pack, one thing will be missing. So we decided going forward, we would produce wacky packages without gum. It actually got the boot because it left a powdery film on the stickers. And after all these years, Tops is still getting away with these over-the-top parodies because of free speech. While a few companies took legal action and lost, most want in. We have had companies over the years come to us saying, hey, why aren't our products in the wacky packages? Because we'd like ours to be parodied as well. Did you know one of the artists that worked on earlier wacky packs was Bill Griffith, who was also responsible for the famous alternative cartoon, Zippy the Pinhead. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See us again next time when we unwrap more secrets behind America's favorite